On the news, IGP orders DIG to coordinate upscaled security strategies following the recent abduction and killings in the Federal Capital Territory. Supreme Court reserves judgment in Nasarawa governorship dispute. And Shell exits onshore exploration in Nigeria, sells assets for $1.3 billion. Thank you for joining us on News Now. I'm Simisola Hatikun. Worried by the current incessant incident of uh, re kidnapping in the federal capital territory, FCT Abuja, and other similar incidents across the country, the Inspector General of Police, IGP Kayode Egbetoko, has ordered the Deputy Inspector General of Police at the Department of Operations to personally coordinate the upscale security strategies in place to decimate perpetrators and immediately restore normalcy. This was contained in a statement made available to newsmen in Abuja on Tuesday by the Force Public Relations Officer, Assistant Commissioner of Police, ACP Olumuiwa Dejobi. According to the statement, the IGP gave that directive on Monday. During a crucial meeting, he convened with the force management team and tactical squads to address the rising concerns surrounding insecurity in the country. The statement pointed out that the IGP expressed deep concern over the unfortunate event and emphasized the need for decisive action to curb such hideous crimes. Meanwhile, the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, FCT, Yesun Wike, has summoned an emergency meeting over the worrying state of insecurity in the nation's capital. Abuja residents have been living in fear over the worrisome security situation in the city, which has seen kidnappers and bandits running rampage. In response to the challenge, the minister on Tuesday summoned a meeting of security agencies and other stakeholders in the FCT. Some of those who were in attendance include heads of security agencies in the FCT, top officials of the Federal Capital Territory Administration, FCTA, council chairman, and traditional rulers. This meeting is particularly to look into such challenges and see how we'll be able to resolve the problems. And that's why we invited all the, the council chairmen, because they also have a responsibility in their various uh, area councils. So I put our head together and come up with solutions. So for the press, it's just for you to know that we are not sleeping. Security agencies are also not uh, sleeping. We we'll provide every support that they require in order to allay the fears of the citizens or residents. And this time around, we will not be happy where area council chairman will abdicate their responsibility and travel out. We have gotten reports that council chairman travel anytime, and then if anything happens, of course, they will not call anybody's name. They will call uh, the LCT minister. At least 134 people have been kidnapped in the last three months in the Federal Capital Territory, FCT, according to the Federal Capital Territory Public Complaints Commission. The commission says insecurity within the nation's capital has taken a disturbing trend and a state of emergency should be declared to address the situation. Commissioner of the FCT Public Complaints Commission, Dalhatu Musa, said this at a briefing of newsmen in Abuja, highlighting the high rate of kidnapping and banditry going on in the six area councils of the FCT. He says kidnappers are having a field day, while innocent people are killed, kidnapped and robbed of their belongings. The commission is so worried because Abuja is the capital city of Nigeria, the mirror through which the entire world sees this country. And if we allow and keep quiet and remain docile with the happenings, it will consume everybody. As we speak, people are deserting their communities in the rural community. 
migrating to the nearest urban cities. And in the whole six area council, there is no area council that has not been ravaged and seized by these bandits and kidnappers, killing people on their farms, in their houses, in their shops, and all what me. It's very, very unbecoming, and I want to call the attention of the Honorable Minister to this ugly trend that is going on in the FCT. What is happening, the strategy we are adopting now need to be changed because it's not working. We need to engage and empower the civilian JTF because when it happens, what we do is reactional. We deploy security agencies, they go there, do operation, and come back. And these criminals have intelligence. As soon as the security return back, they go back to the other community. In fact, when they go to attack Buari, and we deploy security to Buari, they go back to Kuje and left the scene in Buari, and then distract the attention of the security agency to Kuje Area Council. And when we go after them in Kuje, they go to Abaji. This is how they are be jostling and playing with the intelligence of our security. Yes, they are doing their best, but this strategy surely must have to change. With the recent spate of kidnapping, one chance robberies and other criminal activities Abuja security, in Abuja, security experts say it is becoming one of the scariest cities in the world. They have called on the government to declare a state of emergency. But what else can be done to address this menace? Security expert David Okoro joins me to discuss this. Thank you for sparing time, Mr. Okoro. Now we have seen kidnappers demand ransom through mobile phones. And now one wonders if the policy to link the mobile SIM with national identity, NIN, in 2021 is effective in fighting criminality. What are your thoughts on this? Well, uh, thank you for having me. Um, of course, uh, the failure to use this, um, this government policy that we were all eroded into uh, to address issues of, of kidnapping and another insecurity, the failure by government or the security agency to use it have been very counterproductive and the effect can be seen where, whereby uh, kidnappers are using telephone to communicate. They use the banking system to receive ransom and uh, clearly our security uh, establishment have not taken advantage of this, this uh, provision by, by, by the telecoms company. And I hear the minister, the former minister of uh, telecommunication, Mr. Patami, talking about it. I regret it, please, so. But I, and I thought that um, he it's coming late because he, he was there and the policy was implemented. And, and I mean, people, everybody was, uh, uh, the government ensured that you know, uh, people's phone number were at. Definitely, we, we have lost Mr. Okora there. We'll definitely come back to that story. Moving on to electoral matters, this, now the Supreme Court has reserved a uh, judgment in the appeal filed by David Ombugadu of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, challenging the election of Nasarawa State Governor Abdullahi Sule. Ombugadu and Sule have been in a running legal tussle over the outcome of the March 18, 2023 governorship elections in Nasarawa State. On Tuesday, the court, presided over by Justice Kudirat Kekereyakun, reserved the judgment to a date to be communicated to the parties after counsels to the appellant and respondents adopted their briefs of argument. As the World Economic Forum Davos 2024 gets underway in Switzerland, a charity organization, Oxfam in Nigeria, has raised the alarm about a worrying trend which sees the world's five richest men double their fortunes after 2020, while the poor plunge further into the abyss of poverty. Oxfam, in conjunction with other civil society organizations, is critical about the unchecked corporate power and are calling on the government to rapidly and radically reduce the gap between the super-rich and the rest of society. TV 366 Emeka Mako files in the support from Abuja. Part of the discussion at the World Economic Forum is how to bridge the inequality gaps between the haves and the have-nots. A report launched by Osfam Nigeria reveals that five men are worth $869 billion after growing their fortunes at a rate of $14 million per annum during the past four years. 
some people, very few, are getting rich. A good number of us are getting uh, poorer. And it says that globally, the world's five richest men have more than doubled their fortunes from 405 billion US dollars to 816 billion US dollars since 2020. At a rate of 40 million dollars per hour. I mean, these five men, they are more or less, uh, what's the name, earning 40 million dollars an hour. It means since I came here at uh, 8 a.m., by now they were just gotten, uh, what's the name, 28 million dollars. Why nearly 5 billion people have been poorer within the same time? Executive Director for Connected Development, Amzad Lawa, while speaking on the report, disclosed that Nigerian government approved tax holidays in 2023, which has cumulatively resulted in an approximate 5 trillion naira, calling for a transparency and equality so as to avert any possible anarchy. While the federal government is saying they cannot meet budget demand, and we're going to borrow, knowing that Nigeria is currently carrying a debt burden, and yet we're giving tax incentive for people who are profiting in billions of dollars within our economy. No, this is unacceptable. We need a new era of tax, a regime that ensures fairness, equity, and justice. Because again, if we continue like this, this will lead to state capture and anarchy. On his part, the executive director Civil Society Legislative Advocacy Center, our Rafsanjani, advocate the introduction of beneficial ownership, which helps curtail gross financial impropriety among government officials. The recent scandal again, Paza, exposed how government officials dubiously use their own company, use their wives and children, and get you know this kind of uh, either consultancy or contract or tax holiday. What happened in the Ministry of uh, Humanitarian Affairs is also a clear indication on how some powerful people within government are giving contracts to themselves in violation of public procurement law. So there's no way you can address poverty gaps if people are using their position to even cheat on the state from getting the resources that they will use to deal with developmental gaps that we have. They also argue that it's absurd that any same society allocate 18% of its entire 2024 budget on tax incentives to corporate entities as tax waivers. Why Oxfam in Nigeria says tax expenditure should undergo parliamentary oversight and public debate, which enhance awareness and engender trust. Well, let's go back to the story on rising insecurity in the FCT and nationwide security expert David Okoro is back with us. Thank you very much for uh, joining us again. Now, do you think uh, there can be an immediate strategy out of this menace of insecurity in the country? And let's also discuss the issue of community policing and state policing, which appears that nothing is done to actualize it in the face of this daunting security challenge. What are your thoughts on these two issues? Briefly, sir. But yeah, I just want to say that, yeah, we, we do need to change security um, strategy that, that have been de deployed so far. What the security strategy that have been deployed is reactive. You wait for the event, for the crime to happen, then you start running after the criminals. We are saying now that we need to change strategy to becoming more proactive. And these are the things that we need to do if you can be quickly. First is to take the fight to the, to the uh, kidnappers, the, the bandits and the kidnappers, they, they have where they operate from what we call this, their staging areas. So we need, and these staging area, areas are fairly well known by security agencies. So we don't have to wait or they don't have to wait until these this kidnappings and bandits banditry attacks happen. This fight should be taken to the uh, to, to the state areas of this security of this uh, bandit and 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 and, and um, elements that are creating these problems. The second, of course, is that we will need to deploy the agricultural policy, if you like. Government have said that they are going to be using the around 500,000 hectares this year to produce food uh, in order to achieve food security. 
I am proposing that those land, those uh, those um, agricultural, massive agricultural project should be located in areas that we are calling non-governed uh, non spaces. This, this non-governed spaces is where these kidnappers uh, operate the, the, the resource, the, the, the work, the, um, the, um, the work, the train, the, the stage from those areas. So when farms, huge farms, are set up around those 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 areas that we consider as as being uh, on government spaces right now, you deny them spaces to operate from. Of course, some people tell you that around Abuja, which we know, there are huge mountains, there are large portions swaths of on government spaces. These spaces should be uh, converted to the farms under the uh, government program of uh, uh, food security. Then the issue of uh, you are talking about. Uh, 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 community policing. Community policing have not worked well. I have said it before on this station, I'm repeating it, that what we need is to build security resilience, develop each community, build security around each community. There's what we call the human dimension of security. Every community has the capacity to protect itself. So government should work with the communities to build community resilience using the human dimension of, of security of each of those security uh, of those of those communities. So we do need to build security resilience around communities. So the communities will be able to to protect or at least ensure that their terrains are not used for as as basis to stage um, security attacks on on the community on on the cities like Abuja and the rest of them. So we do need to change secure, security strategy. What Nigeria have sat down, we are we are waiting for attacks and all that. Must change to becoming more proactive this time around. Our security expert David Okora, thank you very much for speaking to us. Well, it's time for a short break, but still to come, Super Eagles doctors under fire after Sadiq's poor diagnosis. Stay with us for details. Welcome back. Let's take you through our top stories. Worried by the recent incessant incidents of kidnapping in the Federal Capital Territory, FCT Abuja, and other similar incidents across the country, the Inspector General of Police, IGP Kayode Egbetokun, has ordered the Deputy Inspector General of Police, Department of Operations, to personally coordinate the upscaled security strategies in place to decimate perpetrators and immediately restore normalcy. According to a statement made available to newsmen in Abuja on Tuesday, Today, by the Force Public Relations Officer, Assistant Commissioner of Police, ACP Olumuiwa Dejobi, the IGP expressed deep concern over the unfortunate event and emphasized the need for decisive action to curb such heinous crimes. We also told you that the Supreme Court has reserved judgment in the appeal filed by David Obugadu of the People's Democratic Party PDP challenging the election of Nasarawa State Governor Abdullahi Sule. Obugadu and Sule have been in a running legal tussle over the outcome of the March 18, 2023 governorship election in Nasarawa State. On Tuesday, the court, presided over by Justice Kudirat Kekireho, reserved the judgment to a date to be communicated to the parties after counsels to the appellant and respondents adopted their briefs of argument. Now, in case you missed any of our news bulletins or for more updates, you can catch us on Limex World TV or log on to our website on www.tv360nigeria.com. You can also follow us on our social media platforms on Twitter, Instagram and YouTube at TV360 Nigeria or download our mobile app on Google Play Store, Huawei App Gallery and Apple Store. On Facebook, we're at TV360 Online.
let's have some business news. Tamilore Kikolia is on standby. Over to you, Tamilore. Thank you, Sami. Hello and welcome to Business News. The Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Food Security under the National Agricultural Growth Scheme and AgroPocket Program has met with critical stakeholders to strategize on the implementation of the second phase of the 2023-2024 dry season famine. In his address at the meeting, the Minister of Agriculture and Food Security, Abubakar Kiyari, said the objective of the forum was to review the implementation of the 2023-2024 dry season wheat production implemented in a 15 wheat producing state based on their comparative advantage. Speaking further with TV360 Nigeria, entrepreneur and economic analyst Obinaya Rakba emphasized the need for smart farming in Nigeria, which he says will cause a necessary departure from rain-fed agriculture, consequently boosting food supply in the country. There are several disruptions that uh, we, we are dealing with. And what does Nigeria need to do? Sit down on the round table with authority figures, with technocrats at the Prime Minister of Agriculture, at the different Prime Minister of Works who have to construct the roads so that there are feeder roads for people to move things out of the hinterlands. Sit with the IITA in Ibadan, sit down with Broda and all of the research institutes, over 20 of them on the Ministry of Agriculture, to find out if we can do smart agriculture, greenhouse farming, and get um, hybrid seedlings. You have here about coconuts, uh, plants that can grow over 100 pots on a tree within the space of two and a half years. So there are improved things you can do, cassava stems, yam uh, seedlings that can move, fa grow faster, palm, palm fruits that can grow faster, a lot of other things. So Nigeria has all it takes. Several and four local government areas, you have one local government, one product. Every local government area produces at least one thing she has com comparative cost advantage on. So it's important that Nigeria puts a house in order, we can actually, like uh, Donald Trump would say in uh, America first, we can actually see Nigeria first and look inwards. Rather than focusing on the construction or the factory of the world, China, and also of, of those other countries, the fact that there's a crisis in Ukraine and there's challenges to sorghum and wheat does not mean that the wheat and the sorghum that is in Benue State, which is a food basket of Nigeria, cannot feed us. So it's, it's just ensuring that we're not mentally lazy and then uh, we take advantage of the ECOWAS protocol on freedom of movements and persons. While still in business, Shell PLC has agreed to sell its Nigerian onshore oil business to a consortium of local companies for more than $1.3 billion. If approved by the government, the transaction will fulfill Shell's long-term goal of extracting itself from a challenging operating environment in the Niger Delta region while retaining a presence elsewhere in the country. Shell says it will also receive additional cash payment of as much as $1.1 billion on completion. The company's integrated gas and upstream director Zoyu Junvich says the agreement marks an important milestone for Shell in Nigeria, adding that the deal will simplify the company's portfolio and focus future discipline investment in Nigeria on its deep water and integrated gas positions. We'll take a break here and be back with Stock Market Report. As the second weekday of trading and the local boss maintained his northward movement, ended the trading on a positive note at 3.93%, with the market cap at 48.15 trillion naira. Now, at the end of trading, 123 listed NGS traders participated in trading, leading a positive market breadth of 77 gainers against 10 losers. Now, thanks to these investors who traded, Dangote Sugar Refinery led the gainers league, followed closely by National Salt Company, both closely at 81 naira 40 kobo and 71 naira 50 kobo respectively now to our market summary a total of 1 million volumes of shares were exchanged and 14,835 deals valued at over 16 billion now when compared to our previous day trading this trading shows 35 percent improvement in volume 45 percent improvement in turnover and 9 percent improvement in deals now it shifts now to our select global stocks what she has slipped and the dollar and US as bond yield rose on Tuesday as market breadth reduced bets that global interest rates could come out early as March, giving all our select global stock a bearish um, trading as the UK FTSE ended at 0.45%, US Dow Jones at 0.55%, and Japan's Nikkei at 0.79%. And that's all on business and stock market report. Over to you, Simi. Thank you very much, Tamilaria, for the update.
On December 29, 2023, South Africa filed a case against Israel before the International Court of Justice, ICJ, the United Nations Primary Judicial Agency, charging the state for, of genocide in its military operation in Gaza. South Africa also sought that the court provide interim remedies to protect the Palestinian population. This is the first time a state has launched a genocide case against another state to the ICJ, sparking a heated discussion among the international community. Well, earlier I spoke with South Africa-based political analyst and communications specialist Kim Heller on this development. I began by getting her thoughts on South Africa's move to take the perceived genocide genocidal actions by Israel against Hamas to the International Court of Justice. I speak as a very proud South African that at least of all the countries in the world who have been ignoring the great acts of civil genocide in uh, Palestine by Israel, that South Africa has stood up and taken um, Israel to the highest court of the UN. And uh, we have all seen um, this horror unfolding in real time over the past few months. And uh, South Africa, I think, has done a very brave and principled uh, stance to represent what many of us in the streets and across Africa and across the world feel. And in sports, the Nigeria Football Federation, NFF, has defended the medical team of the Super Eagles following criticism surrounding their handling of Omar Sadiq's injury. The Real Sociedad striker was dropped off from Nigeria's squad for the 2023 Africa Cup of Nations AFCON after coping an injury in the 2-0 friendly defeat to Guinea and was replaced in the squad by Paul Onwachu. The 26-year-old, who was expected to be signed Line for three weeks was seen in a video training with his Real Sociedad teammates on Monday, a situation which has made soccer-loving Nigerians cast doubt on the competence of the medical crew. The NFF, however, says the crew handled the injury with competence and professionalism. Well, that's all on News Now. Thank you very much for watching. See you again next time. Bye for now.